Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everybody. My name is MC Brown and I'm here to introduce you to our Wednesday webinar here at Continuant. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the tungsten replicator for Kafka and in particular we're going to be having a look at uh, real-time uh, data loading from Amazon RDS into Kafka. Uh, just a few, a couple of admin points before we get started. So this recording, uh, this webinar is being recorded. You'll be able to go in and view it later. It will appear on the website. Also, feel free to answer questions uh, at any time as we're going through this. Uh, hopefully, if there's time at the end, I'll be able to answer those questions. If not, we'll post a summary of those questions and their answers, obviously, on the website as well uh, after this webinar has been completed. So with those two items out of the way, uh, it's time to get started. And, uh, you know, today we're having a look at, at, at loading our data um, from, from Amazon RDS into Kafka. And what we want to look at here really is why would you use Kafka in the first place? Obviously. Uh, you know, Kafka is a, a technology that is, has been around uh, for a while now, but is also proving to be very popular. We'll look at the kind of things that you uh, that you would use that for. We'll also have a look at how the replication works and obviously how Tungsten Replicator get that state, gets that data in. And we'll also look at uh, now you've done that, what could you actually do with that? And then we'll uh, we'll have a little demo. Uh, you'll be able to see what the uh, what the replication and what replication into Kafka looks like. And then ultimately, we'll have a look at a, a few things that we're doing in the future. Uh, so some new uh, features and functionality that are going to come as part of the, the overall direction of, of the replicator. So <clears throat> let's start by having a look at why we, you would use Kafka, right? So, so Kafka is a, is a high performance message bus. And I want to stress here that it, it is a message bus. Kafka is not really a database. Uh, it, it is a method of sending small discrete little messages uh, over a system and then it runs on a kind of a publish subscribe model so you publish to a particular topic you can subscribe to a particular topic and you can uh, get the information it's a great way of distributing uh, these messages between different places and you can use that process for a, a whole variety of different things because it's so high performance because it's so uh, efficient obviously we can do um, things like uh, log aggregation, so we can take a lot of information in. You've got something generating messages out, out onto Kafka. Uh, we take that information out onto Kafka. We pull that information in, um, and then you're able to take that information and then process it. And maybe you're doing uh, things like uh, metrics. You're doing counters. You know, this is how many warnings have occurred. This is how many errors have occurred, etc. cetera. Uh, then uh, you can also use it for uh, different, thing, uh, different things like um, uh, activity and security tracking, obviously get notifications when someone has done something, you see the message as it comes across on the system. You can also use it for metrics, performance monitoring, uh, pulling all of that information in and processing it. And obviously we can also use it for, for uh, you know, primarily what we're going to be talking about today really, which is uh, ingestion of that data into other databases. Now, typically that ingestion is going to be into something like Hadoop. Uh, it's not the only target, but often it is the, the, the very, very common target. Obviously, uh, both Hadoop and uh, Kafka are Apache projects, so it's a very, very common use case. There's lots of different ways in which we can pull that information in. Uh, one of the, the key things is uh, for, for Kafka is because it is a message-based system, and because these messages come out in a particular order, we can also use it for kind of event management. And by that, I mean, uh, you know, imagine that uh, someone is, say, uploading a photo to your website and you want to be able to process that photo and turn it into, uh, you know, a, a, a thumbnail and different size images so that you can use it around. That's not something that you would typically want to be done, uh, processed uh, by your application while the user is actually trying to upload that, that information. You don't want them to wait while you're generating all of those additional images. But you do want to have something that will ultimately fire that off and trigger it so that downstream, uh, you know, those images are created automatically as, as part of the process. Kafka is a perfect example of how you could do that. Because it's a message bus, because, it, because it's a queue, basically we can say, oh, an image has been added to the, to the database, so obviously a record has been written into the database. Downstream, we process that image, create all of the different versions of it, because there's a, an application set there processing the messages that are coming in from Kafka. Now that's a, a, a fairly simple and, and, and straightforward example of how you would you would basically take that process out of your application and, and make use of the the message bus style environment within Kafka. But it's a very very good one, uh, and it's one that I've seen uh, used a number of times. Now why would you do that within Amazon? Well, obviously, you know Amazon has a, a number of advantages. RDS is a very very quick way for us to set up a, a you know a MySQL uh, environment, a MySQL deployment. We can get that data up and running very, very quickly. Uh, you know, you can get a, an Amazon RDS instance up within a few minutes. Um, and if you're using that as part of the, the rest of your system, uh, you know, it's very quick to get that up. Uh, they also have uh, Kafka, 
um, as a target within AWS, so we can obviously build a, 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 a Kafka environment. And it also means that, uh, you know, very, very easy to deploy, very, very easy to, to scale um, and extend that environment. And suddenly you've got both a database uh, for your information and a, a Kafka environment in order to send your, your messages. And then a whole variety of things are available to you. Obviously, things like the image processing that I mentioned uh, earlier is a good example. We can also use it for uh, replicating information and sending messages between different availability zones uh, and data centers and regions within AWS. We can also um, uh, obviously improve the way in which you distribute information uh, among these different components, all while still within your Amazon environment. <coughs> and the key benefit from the perspective of actually using the replicator for doing this process is, is that it turns out to be uh, very, very low latency. You know, we can take information from your database uh, and get that out into Kafka. Uh, you know, usually um, uh, sub-second, often very, very quicker than sub-second uh, of getting that message out. But more importantly, we do that outside of your application. So obviously, we are, we are rather than relying on your application, uh, you know, writing information to the database, and then once it's written information to the database, taking that and then seeding that into your Kafka environment as a message, we can have the information written into the database by your application and you get the, the transactional consistency that you get from that process. And then the database uh, and the tungsten replicator take that information from the database and distribute that and put that into your, your Kafka message bus. So your application uh, you know, can return to the user much, much quickly and it knows the information has been written to the database because we still have that transactional consistency, but you also know that that information is ultimately being written out to your Kafka environment too. So it's a very, very key way uh, of getting that process is processing going uh, and handling that entire process uh, for you without involving your application and without making uh, rapid changes to your application. Obviously, if you've already got an application and you want to add uh, Kafka support to it, uh, that's a, another solution where the tungsten replicator can sit in. We can configure the, the tungsten replicator to sit there, replicate the data from your database directly into Kafka without you ever having to change your application or indeed take your application down. So what does that look like in principle? Well, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to show a, a, a few different examples of, uh, you know, the kind of deployments that you can do and the type, type of deployments that we have seen in, in the way that this system works. Obviously, the replicator supports a number of different topologies. I'm not going to go through all of those topologies here. Go and view one of our past webinars. Uh, but, you know, we do fan in, fan out, etc. This is an example where we are doing fan in. So we've got lots and lots of uh, different source databases, Amazon RDS, could actually be a whole variety here, right? We could be Amazon RDS, could be native MySQL, could it also be Oracle. Uh, we could take all of that information out, out of the replicator, push that information out into Kafka, and then ultimately uh, Kafka uh, could be being used to do the ingestion into Hadoop. So we're concentrating the, the data from multiple sources and concentrating that through Kafka into a single target, which is your, uh, which is your Hadoop environment. Now, obviously, we also write, uh, Tungsten Replicator will write directly to Hadoop, uh, but some people prefer the, the Kafka feed only because it enables them to do that kind of, uh, you know, interstitial processing, uh, etc., before the data ultimately gets written down into the, the Hadoop environment. Also gives you the opportunity to obviously combine that with other information. And then a kind of a different model, obviously, same kind of fan in um, uh, model, but obviously we can also de then distribute that out. Kafka has a, a you know a number of different connectors and, and targets over the other side. You know we could be taking that information and, and doing image processing. We could be containing that information and generating an email. Uh, we could be using that information and, and generating metrics. And we could be feeding all of that information from multiple databases, multiple sources of information, uh, and multiple multiple processes. Um, and we take all of that information, push it through Kafka, and then allow Kafka to then distri distribute that to the, the various endpoints and the various processing. So remember, Kafka, message bus, message queue, um, you do get things in a, in a particular order. We can also define things. So we can also say, you know, when, we, when you distribute a message with a replicator, what happens is, is when it's written into Kafka, we say we, we guarantee, want to guarantee that this message will reach a destination. Uh, and we can also specify things like, uh, you know, how many times, uh, how many Kafka servers within a Kafka cluster. We want to make sure that that, that information is copied to. Uh, we'll have a look a bit more in uh, uh, some of the options and some of the configuration available as we go through this. Um, but you get the idea here where, where we've now got a flexible model for extracting the data from, uh, from our RDS environment, uh, as we're looking at here taking that information out, pushing it through Kafka, and then uh, you know, enabling downstream applications to subscribe to those events, that, that information that is being processed and, and pushing it through. 
So what does that look like from the from the perspective of a deployment model? So the what we actually have is uh, you would have uh, two replicators. Uh, they could be on the same host, but more typically we would recommend putting them on onto separate hosts. Uh, but what you have is you have a, a master replicator, and the master replicator is pulling that information out of a, an Amazon RDS instance. So we're pulling the information uh, directly out of the uh, the replication stream that is generated by uh, Amazon RDS. We take that information, we put it into our own internal format, which is called THL. And the reason that we do that is the THL is a, a very architecture neutral format. It means that we get a, a lot of information, both about the, the source data and obviously a lot of the meta metadata and the information about how that is structured. We take that information and put it into THL, and that means it's now in, in our own queue and our own format. And then the slave replicator takes the information out uh, of the THL and ultimately applies that down in, into Kafka. This entire process is very quick, uh, you know, from the perspective of getting the data out of a RDS instance, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, typically you're going to be sub-second, you know, millisecond uh, level of, of extraction of the data, uh, as quick as it is written out um, uh, over the network connection. And the replicator then uh, equally takes, you know, milliseconds to do that. Ultimately, the applier, again, we're writing directly into uh, Kafka using the, the Kafka native API. And... Um, you know, we pull out and extract and, um, and pass on that data very, very quickly. Uh, typically, we see latency of uh, less than half a second, less than a third of a second for um, a, a, typical, uh, a typical insert into a database. Obviously, that depends on the size of the, the, the insert, how much data, et cetera, is involved there. Um, you know, and also, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a look at a, a very, very simple demo of, of uh, what the packets uh, look like and how that information is output. But you'll see, you know, from a, from a very, very basic level, um, you know, a, a single insert of a row, uh, you know, the latency is obviously going to be higher than it would be on a, on a constant stream of information, but you get the idea of how we can get that data out. The really important thing, and I can't stress this enough, is that this is all happening outside of your applications. So if you already have an application and you want that application to distribute data out over Kafka uh, that you're writing into your database, the replicator will handle that for you. Uh, without you having to change your application, and perhaps more importantly, uh, you know you can keep your your transactional semantics uh, within your uh, application for writing into the database while still enabling that data to ultimately be forwarded out to Kafka over a queue. So, <clears throat> what do we actually do with that information? So, so we take in that information, we convert it into THL, and then we actually write that information out to Kafka. Uh, what does that look like? So. Uh, you know, there are a variety of different methods and tools that we could have used to, to do this. Uh, what we actually chose uh, for our first uh, version of this, uh, of this system, we write in, out the information as a, a standard Kafka message in the, the JSON format. So uh, very, very simple, easy to consume um, uh, basis of the information. And for each individual row, uh, we convert each individual row into a message. And that message consists of, uh, you know, a bunch of metadata information. So we get the schema name table name, uh, you know, sequence number, the, the commit timestamp, so when the original transaction was committed on, on the source database, and the operation type. Obviously, we're dealing with database transactions here, so, uh, you know, you do get to identify whether it was an insert, an, uh, an update, or a delete, and that information is all identified and is there within the metadata. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, the message header, uh, which is, uh, you know, consists of the, the schema, uh, schema name, uh, table name, and the primary key information, if we have it, as that information gets written out. And then obviously we have the, the payload of, of the actual embedded message. But it's really, really important to understand that we are doing this on an individual row by row basis, right? So if you insert, uh, you know, a thousand rows into your database, you're going to generate a thousand messages out on the, the Kafka service, and each message will say, this was an insert, you know, this is the metadata, this, these are the, the, the schema, the table that it was inserted into, and here's the actual message data. So we're actually pumping that information out uh, uh, permanently on a row by row basis. Now, that does mean there are some, some interesting uh, elements uh, uh, that, that you need to be aware of when it comes to the replicator. Obviously, the replicator is typically styled against uh, replicating entire transactions against the database. Um, at the moment, we do not use the transactional features within Kafka. So obviously, if you uh, stop midway uh, through a, a transaction and then restart, we end up resending messages, uh, which is something that we need to handle. Uh, but full transactional support for uh, Kafka is something that will actually um, uh, take place and occur in, in a future version. Actually, uh, it, it, at the moment, it is planned to be in, uh, in 5.3.0, uh, which will 
uh, come out uh, towards the end of uh, 2017. Now, <clears throat> in, in terms of uh, you know the structure and the format of that information, obviously we have uh, we have the ability to take that information and and have a look at that and restructure that however we want. At the moment, we are um, uh, we are working uh, with a number of customers and exactly what that information uh, is is going to contain. I've talked about some of the metadata that we include. You know, at the moment we don't include uh, full information about the the data that is, has been extracted. Um, so obviously, in a, in a typical MySQL transaction, obviously there's a bunch of information, time zone, uh, you know, SQL modes, etc. Information that we could potentially embed into, into the message um, and into the metadata, and we currently don't do that. What we do do is we do convert the information into into a message which is in standard key value pairs. Um, and obviously, we will we will translate some some specific types. I'll, I'll get back onto the the format of that 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 message and that structure in a second. Um, we do also allow certain elements of uh, the replication process to be uh, customizable. So I, I mentioned some of this earlier, right? We we can guarantee uh, that Kafka has said yes, I've accepted the message and it's forwarded. Um, as I said, full transactional support in, in Kafka is not something that we support yet, but it is coming in a in a future version. Um, and uh, you know, we can specify the acknowledgments. You can specify how many Kafka servers. Uh, you know, how much that that message has been distributed and replicated among the Kafka servers before we necessarily accept it and then carry on. Um, and you can also change the the format of the message key. So every message that is sent has a a particular message ID and a particular structure. Um, and you're able to, to specify the format of that message key. So at the moment, it, it's based on uh, the uh, the schema name, the table name, and the primary key information. You can change that structure so that it doesn't include that. Only includes the primary key. You know, it includes underscores, etc., within the within the message. You can also choose what metadata to include in in the output. So uh, at the moment, uh, you know, you're able to define whether that's the the schema and the table name, um, or um, whether that information is is embedded into the message, the commit timestamp, etc. Now, also when it comes to uh, specifying the uh, the topic, um, we currently default to the schema name and uh, the table name, uh, separated by an underscore as the topic name. So, for example, if you insert everything into, you know, um, an uh, orders table. Um, you know, on an invoices schema, then it's all going to go into the invoices underscores um, uh, orders uh, message uh, bus uh, topic within uh, Kafka. Uh, that's also configurable. At the moment, it, it is configurable from the perspective that you can actually specify just everything goes out into to a single topic. Obviously, if you wanted to change the topic information, that's something that you would be able to use with one of our standard filters. So built into the replicator. Uh, is a set of uh, standard filters that enables you to rename things. So you could just rename the schema and the table according to your rules, and that could be, uh, you know, a, a according to your own structure. Um, in the future, we will probably have some different options there. So maybe you wanted to to in, you know pass on everything that was in orders goes to a particular uh, topic, but everything that was in sales goes to a different one. Uh, or maybe you have schemas, etc., where you wanted to go to a, a specific topic name, and others you want to go to. Um, you know, uh, um, an, an explicit topic name um, as that information goes across. These are all things where, where you know, we're hoping that uh, you as customers are going to be able to turn around to us and, and tell us what you want. We've tried to make it as flexible in the first instance, and obviously with the filtering uh, and renaming capability uh, that is already built into the replicator, uh, you should be able to take that information and, and uh, determine what it is you want to be able to do with that and how you want that information distributed uh, across the various uh, topics and schemas. Now, uh, what we're going to do now, I'm going to uh, uh, quickly uh, pop out for a second, and we're going to have a look at a demo. Um, and what I'm going to try and, and show you is uh, just a, um, uh, a basic overview of, of what the replicator looks like, and obviously uh, how things are structured, what happens in, in terms of the output. So. Um, I'm going to do a T-Rep CTR status here. You can see that what we have is we have a, um, a, a, a machine here that, that is running. We are actually extracting the data. We're pulling this out um, of a MySQL host. We're taking that information out. Um, 
and some key elements here really uh, applied last sequence number every transaction within uh, within the replicator gets its own unique sequence number uh, so that this is a mono, monotonically increasing sequence number each transaction get its own unique one and obviously that's also attached to uh, the uh, the binary log that is generated uh, we also have, uh, you know, um, a pride latency. We know how long it takes to pull the information out. We naturally get statistics and other information to understand how quickly that is. So you can see it, uh, how quickly we're, we're getting that information out. If I uh, just go into, um, if I just go into uh, MySQL here just for a second, and um, what we have in here is uh, I should have, um, I should have a, a simple table here. So I should have a, a very, very simple table here. Not very exciting. Um, insert into message values. <clears throat> so I've just basically in, inserted a, um, a single row of information into here. And if I go in and have a look at uh, TREP CTR status, hopefully uh, we've gone from 23 to 24. You can see that we've extracted that. You can also see that the latency here is a second. Uh, that does seem uh, particularly high. Uh, uh, bear in mind, in this particular instance, uh, I'm not actually using RDS. I'm, I'm using a, a local host, but you can see the output here. We're, we're extracting that information. You were to do, um, you know, a, a larger process, and I can show this just so that you can uh, see what we're pulling out. If we do a larger process where we're, we're pulling a, a, a much larger a bunch of information, again, you can see. You know, latency there is about a second. Uh, these are running on, on VMs on my machine. I don't expect them to be extremely fast. Um, over here on the other side, if we have a look at a, a TREP CTL status, so this is uh, uh, my Kafka host here. Uh, we're pulling out the information. You can see here that the sequence number matches. That's great because that's what we want. Uh, this is a great way for us to be able to determine uh, whether we're up to date. And if we actually have a look here at uh, Kafka, you can see here um, what the information looks like and I, I appreciate that that is not uh, the clearest view of what that structure and that information looks like uh, so what we will do is take that information let's convert it into a, a bit more uh, of a useful format you can see it's in JSON you can see that this here is the metadata all of the metadata fields are, are prefixed with an underscore and we get the information out here we know the sequence number we know the original commit time we know the operation type uh, and then obviously you see the, the raw information. If you um, go uh, and have a look at, um, you can never get back into your mind the same way that you wanted to before. Uh, if we go in and have a look at this, if we actually go in and um, update a record, let's just have a look what we got here, um, update message set message. Goodbye. Oops. Where ID one? Uh, so here we've done a we've done an update. If we go over here and have a look at our Kafka update, you can see that actually we've got an update operation, and you can see uh, the updated the the updated version of the information. So I should point out here that, that what we're doing uh, the default method actually for the replicator to work in a in a heterogeneous environment is you do actually only pull out uh, the new information, and we work on the basis that you're going to have primary keys. Uh, on your source data so that we can identify that. You can change that if we'd wanted to. We could have included the, the old information and the new information into the record so you've got a copy of that old and new. Um, it's just our, our default uh, method of deployment is to, to, to work on the basis that you would have that primary keys and you would have that target updated. But you could have old and new information and equally when you delete a record we can have a, a copy of the old information um, I extracted as well. Now again, all of these options, uh, all of these uh, these um, these different elements are things that we are working on. If there's something specific that you want to go and have a look at, some specific output that you want to be able to see, uh, you know, please get in touch. Tell us what what it is you'd like to see in this particular uh, process. Uh, you know, for us, this is a this is a we've developed this. A couple of our customers have been interested in in having a, a Kafka applier. Obviously, we 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 want to uh, um, appeal to those people first. Uh, as we go forward, I'm sure there are going to be people who want to be able to do different things. That said, uh, there are obviously some things that we are doing uh, just generally for uh, Kafka and for uh, Kafka deployment. So uh, I've mentioned this a couple of times now, full transaction support for Kafka. So later versions of Kafka actually have a, a full transactional style support. So 
if you happen to be writing in a huge number of, of potential messages, it's not until you actually say this is the end of this block of messages that Kafka will actually start distributing them. Uh, obviously, that matches the, the the semantic style of a typical transactional database, and particularly, particularly obviously, Amazon RDS for, for MySQL. We will be able to match transaction for transaction as we move that across, and that also means you you'd be able to take that out. Other elements, uh, like I said, uh, you know, we might want to include full metadata if we have a look at a, at a typical record. Um, and let me just show you that so that you can see what that. Um, um, Uh, we can see what that looks like. So, if we have a look at a, you know, a, the the typical THL information, you can see that there is a huge amount of metadata that we extract. Obviously, we extract information like, uh, you know, the 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 server host name that it was generated on, uh, the MySQL server ID, what the MySQL was, string format, etc. Any any settings, uh, what filters, etc. have been applied. Uh, currently, we don't take any of that information through into the message that is within Kafka. Uh, but obviously, longer term, we're looking at how we could potentially use that as a method for uh, ultimately exchanging the data and using Kafka as the method for, for distributing that data across. And then you can see uh, here, obviously, we've got uh, both the old information and the new information. Uh, you can see we include, uh, you know, both versions into that into that data that is being extracted. So, you know, if we, we have a look uh, going forward, our ability to, to be able to extract, uh, you know, embed, combine all of that information together um, and put that into a Kafka message is something that we're, we're uh, actively looking at. We're also looking at ways we can improve the filters. Um, if you're distributing data and you're sending data out particularly over Kafka, um, you know, maybe you want to be able to, to use that for uh, data processing and analytics. Uh, the chances are maybe there are, there are things that you don't want to – want to be able to view so obviously things like credit card numbers addresses etc that's information that you might either want to filter out which is something we can do now or maybe you want to obscure or otherwise hide that information uh, so that what we what you're not doing is you're not distributing credit card information as part of your transaction because it's it's meaningless um, and, and not very useful and obviously a potential security risk this is something that uh, you know increasingly we, we have to be aware of in the in the computing world is to make sure we don't distribute this information um, uh, we also want to be able to, uh, you know, change, uh, modify, reformat the information as it goes across. So there are a couple of reasons why we do this. Um, one of the uh, elements is particularly in heterogeneous environments in general for the replicator is you want to be able to extract and modify the information. So maybe you want to change the format of a date. Maybe we're extracting a date time and you want to reformat so that it's only a date or maybe the date is, uh, you know, formatted in um, you know, year, month, day uh, format when it gets extracted, uh, or maybe you want to uh, put that out, out uh, only as an epoch. We can do all of that um, uh, through the processing. And we also do other things. We do things automatically. If you happen to be using enums and sets, for example, within your MySQL environment, we will actually already convert that into a string for you automatically and distribute that information as part of the THL and ultimately part of the Kafka message so that you get the correct information uh, as it's been uh, stored into the database. Uh, we're also looking at ways in which for certain data types we can obviously take out that information if you happen to be using uh, you know lookups so say you've uh, you've got um, a, a number of different types of objects and ultimately the, the object type is just another row in your database uh, we're looking at ways in which we can uh, extract that along with the information uh, in the way that you would typically get typically get with a um, uh, an ETL style environment and take that information out. Uh, and combine that into the live replication stream. Obviously, there are some limitations to that. Uh, doing full joins, et cetera, on the data is, is, uh, would be time consuming and would certainly increase the latency, and that's not something that we would recommend. Um, but you know, we're, we're looking at what we can do for the, the more simple um, embedding, extracting uh, information so that it comes out uh, in a more usable format for what is you know, live, real-time replication of that data directly into Kafka. A longer term, uh, this is something that will probably come um, early in 2018. Uh, we are looking at Kafka extraction, and that is basically taking a, um, an incoming stream of Kafka messages and then converting that into uh, THL. And of course, once we've got into that into THL, we can ultimately use that as a method for uh, distributing and applying that information into uh, uh, any of our existing targets. Obviously, that includes Kafka, so you could use it for storing and forwarding uh, uh, Kafka. You could also use it for applying that data out into Hadoop or back into MySQL 
um, Cassandra, etc., any of our existing targets. Um, obviously, you also get the benefit then of uh, you know large scale distribution and database changes. Maybe you want to take uh, a Kafka feed and then apply it into a number of different databases. You also get the benefit of our ability to take that information and, and filter it, and then uh, maybe even resubmit it in, into another Kafka queue. Now that's something that is uh, coming. It's not available yet. Uh, if you want more information, uh, you want to have a, a chat with us and understand exactly what can be achieved. You just want to be able to, uh, uh, you know, discuss what your needs and requirements are, and maybe su suggest some potential improvements for uh, future versions of, of this. Um, you know, please get in touch. Uh, please feel free to to get in touch with the email that's on here. Please go and have a look at our documentation. And obviously, if you want to get in contact uh, directly with uh, any of the people involved, uh, myself included, uh, please go forward. Um, just to kind of recap, you know, in using uh, the Tungsten Replicator to extract data, we can pull that data out of your Amazon RDS instance and distribute that into Kafka, uh, you know, within your Amazon environment. And we can do that concentration, multiple RDS sources, uh, and we can also do that concentration, RDS sources and not RDS sources, and pull all of that information and distribute that through Kafka so that you have a, um, an off-board method of uh, sending your transactions out. Uh, that's it. That's the uh, that's the uh, end of the webinar. I'm in fact slightly over time, so we will uh, leave questions for another time. Uh, but please feel free to come back and watch this uh, video again, and come back for another webinar Wednesday. Uh, we have new topics all the time, um, and please come and join us. Uh, thank you very much for listening.